Hello and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Tyler Reed and I'm the uh, Applications Manager here at Go Engineer. And today we are going to be talking about how to set up strategies and what are some examples of strategies you might want to set up in the CamWorks Technology Database. One of the things I want to stress before you start customizing the technology database is to create a backup. Uh, creating a backup is going to allow you to safely experiment in the TechDB. It might allow you to create a second copy to do experiments just to figure out how the database actually works. In order to create a copy, you're actually just going to copy a file uh, using Windows Explorer. It's going to be under the default location, C CamWorks data, CamWorks and whatever year version you're using then Lang and English will be the folder and you'll see a lot of files in there. The technology database is actually the file called techdb.mdb. Best way to create a backup is to just create a folder in that directory, copy the file over to that folder, maybe you name it backup, and that way you always have a fresh version of the database. Every time I install a new version of, of CamWorks, I go through this process. That way I have a database that is considered a fresh install database. I also like to keep the latest version of my database backed up as well, and I kind of do it the same way. If you back up your database and you come to a point where you need to access that backup, you do that through the TechDB interface. It's under the TechDB, under the maintenance, and then import database. It's going to ask you to browse your backup and then you can back it up. So now that that's out of the way, we're going to talk about teaching CamWorks, and that's really what this presentation's about. I will say at this point, I have another webinar that I did a while back that's more of an introduction to the different areas of the technology database. If you're new to the database, I do recommend viewing that webinar. Because today we're talking more about how to actually interface with the database and maybe what are some good strategies to do that effectively. So CamWorks learns from their user and it really learns through two methods. You can save your work within CamWorks or you can make direct edits within the technology database. And each of these methods are kind of suited to different scenarios and different preferences. I like to think of doing the first method, saving your work within CamWorks, as kind of on the, off the cuff, you know, as required. It's a little bit reactive, but you're basically programming your parts as you want to cut them and then making a decision at that time that, you know, perhaps I want to be able to access this strategy I just did on this part on future parts. And then at that point, you save your work back to the database. The second method, going directly into the TechDB, is a little bit more prudent. It's more future thinking. These are typically strategies that you have planned for future parts, or you're setting up an array of strategies to account for a lot of different, different in instances. We'll see when you're saving your work within CamWorks, the work that you're saving is you know, directly tied to the type of feature you're working on at that point and your work will be accessible for features that match up. But if your feature is a little bit different, if it's shaped a little bit differently, or if it's a blind feature versus a through feature, the work you're saving at that moment in time will not be accessible. And so that's why it makes a lot of sense to go into the TechDB and make some edits um, there when the time comes. So one thing to keep in mind, although CamWorks does learn from you and you do teach it, it's all done manually. That way you can be a little bit strategic on how well it learns. So let's jump into the software. The first thing we're going to talk about is saving work within CamWorks. So I thought of a strategy that I have used in the past and, and that's probably worth saving as a strategy. And that is dealing with deep pockets. This pocket here is about five and five-eighths inch deep. It's quite deep. 
And a lot of times when people are faced with this situation, they might want to break up that pocket into two zones, an upper zone and a lower zone. And they're going to use two different tools that are different lengths to cut each zone. And the reason they might want to do that is they're going to get better stiffness. They're going to be able to cut a little bit quicker with the shorter tool, at least on maybe the first half of the pocket. And then on the second half of the pocket, they're going to have to go to a longer tool. They're going to sacrifice some quality on the cut, and they're also going to sacrifice some speed. And so we're going to set that up within CamWorks. And what I mean by that is we're going to program that, and then we're going to save it back to the database. And then we're going to play around with some parameters in the database. So I'm going to go ahead and just manually create this. I'm going to create a mill part setup. And we're going to do a, a two and a half axis feature that's a pocket. We'll tie it to that bottom face. And then we'll tie it to that top face. For the strategy, I'm using Camworks 2017 Beta 1. And the beta has a couple different strategies that you might not be familiar with. The default strategy is a rough, rough rest, and finish. I'm going to go ahead and keep that for right now, but I'm going to change the results. But what I like about that is it's going to give me two rough operations. So when I generate the operation plan, it creates two rough mills, each with a half inch flat end mill selected. Notice when I generate the tool path, the tool path generates for the first rough mill, but not the second. The reason for that is this is the rough rest operation. It's using the leftover machining. And because it's the same size tool as the one just previously used, there's nothing left over to, to cut, so it doesn't create tool path. We are actually going to keep this for now. I'm going to have to make some changes to my tool, though. CamWorks is set up in a way that it will help you select tools, but it's not very good at selecting lengths of tools. It's good at selecting diameters. And we have an issue on this. Because it is so deep, if we go to the mill holder tab, we can see our tool is definitely not long enough to make this cut. So we're going to have to either choose a new tool or edit this tool. I don't think I do have a tool long enough. So I'm going to go ahead and just edit this. I'm also going to use a larger tool. So I'm going to go ahead and say this is a one inch diameter tool. My overall length, let's go with six inches. My shoulder length will say is three and my flute length is also three. It's a good idea when you're making edits in here to also edit this comment. So this will be a one inch for flute. 3 inch length of cut, and I might even add 6 inch uh, overall length. And then I'm going to go to my mill holder tab, and I'm going to select a protrusion that's above the cut, so say 3.5. Okay, so now I have a tool that's long enough to cut zone 1. Now I have to limit the tool. I'm going to go to the advanced tab. I'm going to create a lower Z limit and I'm going to use that point and I'm going to offset it about 2.98 inches. All right, so I'm cutting about halfway down on this part with this first tool. Because I changed that tool, it's at, Camworks is asking how to deal with that change tool. Should it just change the parameters of the tool, uh, essentially erasing the original tool, or should it add a new tool? And I'm going to say add it. I don't want to erase that original half inch end mill. Now on this second end mill, I'm going to go through the same process here. I'm actually going to choose that one inch tool again to act as a starting spot. And I'm going to make this tool a little bit longer. We'll say this is 8 inches. And we'll say it's 6 inch flute length. So 
So it's a quite long tool. It's a big tool. Now at this point, I actually shouldn't have to touch anything. Because this is already set to cut what's left over, I'm going to go ahead and preview it. Let's re-generate uh, the toolpath for everything. Oh, it's actually not acting how I thought it would. That's okay. We're going to use the Z limits instead. So let's deactivate. Oh, the reason for that is it's using previous leftover. I should explain this. So the previous leftover option, all it does is it looks at the tool that was previously used, takes a, a guess as to what it would have cut, and then looks for what's left over. It doesn't actually look at what was actually cut. In order to do that, you would use the from work in progress. Then it will actually simulate the tool before it and make up the difference. So that's what I was expecting to see. Awesome. That's a better way of doing this second pass than the Z limit. Cool. I'm not going to worry about the finish at this point. Really what I'm after is a way to handle deep pockets. I've programmed this part. And if I'm going to be cutting a lot of enclosures like this, I don't want to go through that process of selecting new tools, splitting it up into zones. So I'm going to teach Camworks this process. The way to do it inside Camworks is you go back to the feature, right click and save operation plan. It asks, do you want to create a new condition, which is a new entry in the database, or do you want to overwrite the existing condition? In this case, we're going to create a new one, and that allows us to give it a new strategy name which I'm going to say is deep pocket to pass. So it's pretty descriptive. Now when I save that, it's telling me exactly what it's saving to the database. It shows me the feature type and the shape. This is a blind feature. The default strategy is the strategy I just named. Base attributes, none. Stock materials, aluminum. And then it has some box widths and a feature depth. Okay, so in within this window I can actually edit these if I choose to. So the way this works is when I go to use this feature in the future, um, it's going to look to see if the pocket fits these parameters. And if it's smaller than this or pocket, it will fit. If it's larger than this pocket, it won't work. And it will never choose this. It will never allow me to create a, um, some toolpath using this strategy. So it's pretty common at this point to bump up these numbers. That's going to expand the size range of pockets I can use this on. Now, we don't always use this, but it's pretty common to bump this up to, say, like 1,000 and 1,000. so that I can use it for anything. So that is teaching Camworks within, within the Camworks user interface. Now it's pretty limited, uh, like we saw. So it's not uncommon to go into the second method, and that is directly into the TechDB. So we can access the TechDB through the user interface or through the Windows Start menu. And we're going to go to Mill. Features and Operations, Features and Operations. So this is where all of those entries that are located for different features. The type of feature we just saved was an irregular pocket because of the way it was shaped. And when you create a new feature and you save it and give it a new name, it shows up at the very end here. So we can see here we've created a new feature, but we can only use it, one, with irregular pockets. They have to be blind. Obviously, we select the strategy. The base attribute is set to none. So, you know, the other option is bottom radius. If within Camworks, this bottom edge had a radius, I wouldn't be able to use my, two, my deep pocket paths the way it's set up now. The stock material is set up to aluminum alloys. So if I, in a future part, wanted to cut one of these out of plastic or steel, and I try to choose that deep pocket option, it wouldn't generate any operations. And I already adjusted the ranges. 
So how do we make this more usable is a pretty common question. We can do a couple things. One, we can just start creating extra copies of this. If I want to create a new copy, maybe through for a through feature, I go to the next one down. I'm going to set this to the deep pocket, aluminum. And now on this feature, I have to tell it what happens when it encounters it. So on the first feature I just saved, when this entry is found, it comes down to this bottom area and it creates two rough mills using these tools and cutting to these depths. Um, I could actually put some extra, now that I'm thinking about it, I could put some extra logic into this. Now it is going to choose these tools automatically. And this is one of those features that maybe I might want to change it to use an equation. Maybe I don't. Um, but the equations only choose tools based on diameter. I'm more worried about length. If I do want to change the tool the way it's selected, I hit the little button next to the tool description. And instead of it calling out the specific tool, I can change it to use an expression. And then it uses different parameters of the feature. It can use the finish radius, which is this radius on the walls. You can use the box length or the box width, which are the length and width of the feature. You can use the base radius if my feature had a base radius, which is the radius on the bottom face like we talked about. Or now with Camworks 2017, you can also use the largest inscribed circle. Largest inscribed circle, instead of looking at the overall shape and size of the feature, it actually looks at what is the largest tool you could fit into that. So if you imagine if we had lots of islands in our pockets or maybe we have we're cutting an o-ring around the top edge of this if i'm cutting an o-ring even though the overall size of the feature might be 10 inches by 8 inches my o-ring might only be able to fit a 1 8 inch tool using that largest inscribed circle takes that into account so that's new i'm i'm just going to allow it to just keep the tools Another thing you can do is change how deep it's going to cut. And on this one, instead of using the Z limits, I might actually read in that Z limit um, right into the feature. I could say go to the feature depth times 0.5. So then it's going to only go down half the feature depth every time. I kind of like that. Okay, so now, but what if I wanted to use this on through features? What I'm going to do is I'm going to take these operations, highlight them, and copy them. I believe I can only do one at a time. And when I copy them, I believe it knocks it up to the very first rung. So I want to start at the bottom, I believe. We're going to try this. So I'm going to hit copy. Go to the new entry I just created. And paste. Copy and paste. It actually is doing it the opposite that I thought. So we're going to go ahead and start at the beginning. Copy and paste. Now you have to use the buttons. It won't recognize Control C and Control V. Okay, and then I'll delete the two that weren't in the right order. So now it's essentially doing the same thing, but it will let me do it for the blind and the through feature at the same time. So that was not the most, uh, it didn't, it wasn't the most efficient way. It required a lot of clicks. So there's another way I'm going to show you here in a bit, but this works. Another thing that gets changed quite a bit is the material. Now, by default, everything's set to all. But what if I only want? What if I ha wanted to do a special two-pocket pass for aluminum, and then everything else I wanted to do something else? If I set this to all, then it will allow me to do. Uh, when it's a blind feature, it'll allow me to do it for any material. 
But what happens if it's plastic? If I set this to, or what happens if it's aluminum? Or yeah, what happens if it's plastic and I only have the aluminum? It won't actually work. So let's give that a shot. I'm gonna close this. Let's change the material to nylon. And now I'm gonna regenerate this and it stays pink. It didn't generate anything because I don't have a matching entry. What I need to do is create another entry that is all materials. And you would essentially do that the same way I created the entry for the through feature. You'd have to copy it and set it up. So instead of making this a through feature, let's just set it to blind. So now I do have two entries that are both blind. They're both set to aluminum. What, look what happens. These two entries are the exact same. And so Camwork screams at me and says, these ranges overlap. It's not going to work. So I have to change at least one of them. What I'm going to do is change the second one to all. Okay. Now look what I have. I have two entries. They're very similar. The only difference is one set to aluminum, one is set to all. Okay. Now the idea here is that for the aluminum one, I might set up different parameters, cutting parameters, or choose different tools than the one that's set to all. Okay, that's the idea. So I'm going to do that. And on the all version, I'm just going to get rid of the contour mill, just so we know that it's different. Okay, so look what happens when I set this back to aluminum and generate my operation plan, it creates my three tools. Cool, that's perfect. If I change it to something non-aluminum, we'll say 4041 or 4140, regenerate the operation plan. It only created my two tools, so it found that second entry. Order is important though, so let's go back into the database and let's just make one minor change. Instead of the aluminum being listed first, We'll list all first, and we'll list aluminum second. Now I had to go to something other than all so that they wouldn't match up. So now all is listed first and aluminum is second. So what happens when I'm trying to cut aluminum and I'm using and I want the, it to find the aluminum entry? I'm going to regenerate my operation plan, and it only created two tools even though this is aluminum. So what happens is when Camworks goes out to the database, it actually looks in the order that they're listed and it will use the first one that matches. And since aluminum is a subset of all, it found the all version first. So something to keep in mind there. When it chooses tools from the tool crib, it does the same thing. So you set up a diameter range, it goes to your tool crib, it looks at the first tool that fits that diameter. And that is the same tool type. End mill, ball nose, hog nose, etc. While we're on the topic of material, I do want to mention something that is important to know. And that is two things. Under tooling, under stock stock slash tool material mapping, you can give priority to different tool uh, materials. Okay, so by going through the different records, if I'm cutting 6061T6, I probably want high speed steel at the top, so I'm going to increase that so that uh, they're mixed so that it does give priority to that when it goes and chooses a tool. Another thing you might want to do is for individual tools, you can set up feeds and speeds for certain materials. 
So if I go to those tools I just created, down here at the bottom of the list, the very end you can select the icon that's the cutting parameters, and these are the feeds and speeds saved to these tools. <clears throat> If you want different feeds and speeds for different materials, you simply add a material, say aluminum, and then you can set the feeds and speeds. And you can do separate feeds and speeds for every material category. And what that does is when you're using this tool in your operation parameters, under feeds and speeds, if it's set up to use the operation, or sorry, the tool, <clears throat> it references those. And they're guided by the material you're, you're cutting with. So what happens if you don't want to create all of those extra entries manually? Like you did one, and you've quickly realized just because you saved one entry doesn't make it a very robust strategy to use for a variety of parts. <clears throat> How do you deal with that? So there are some tools in here that came out in Camworks 2016 that make it helpful. Under Features and Operations, we can go to User Defined Strategies. And if I go to... say, counterboard hole. Counterboard hole is a good one because, let me show you, in 2017, the default strategy for counterboard holes requires, I mean, it involves a lot of steps. It countersinks both this edge and this edge, which is pretty cool, but that's not what everybody wants. So I'm going to go ahead and run feature recognition on this. I'm going to tell it to only find holes. Looks like we're good there. So it found all of the counterboard holes, and it's using something called a drill strategy. Okay, so when I generate an operation plan for that, notice it creates five different operations. It creates a center drill, a drill, a contour mill for the counter bore, a contour mill for that upper chamfer, and then a countersink tool for this bottom chamfer. Now what if I want an, a, a strategy that doesn't include those countersinks? How would I do that? Well, if I'm doing it within Camworks, I would simply delete these two and then go back and save it like we just previously did. But this is one of those ones where I'm thinking ahead, maybe I know exactly what I want, and I want to be able to account for every variety of counterboard holes I might find, whether they're through or blind or what have you. So we're going to go into the TechDB, and we're going to go to User Defined Strategies. We're going to go to Counterboard Holes. And what we're going to do is we're going to take an existing strategy, in this case drill only, and we're going to copy it. So what's happening here is for this drill only cycle, there's actually 24 entries in the database. By copying them, we just copied all 24 entries, and I can change the name here. So this time we'll say no countersink. Okay, now let's go into the features and operations. We'll go to counterboard holes. And if we scroll down to the bottom, we'll see all of our no countersink operations. There's many different varieties because they're all a little bit different. We have some that are blind and under an inch diameter and on the main spindle. We have some that are through and under an inch and on the main spindle. So there's a lot of different varieties. If you're trying to sort through what each one is, if we only want to look at blind, for example, I can use some search filters down at the bottom. I could say blind only and my no countersink strategy. Search those. It looks like there's four of them. 
one for the main spindle and one for a subspindle, which we don't use very often in milling. But now for each one of these entries, I can simply get rid of the tools down here that I don't want to use. I can highlight an entry and hit delete. The holes in my parts were actually through features, so let's make sure we get the through features done up as well. So it's still a few clicks, but we saved a lot by copying an existing strategy. So now, no matter what size my counterbore is, no matter what spindle I'm on, as long as it's a through feature, it's going to do the no countersink. So let's take a look at the results of that. If I double click on my feature, I can change my strategy. Here's that no countersink that I literally just created. When I run this through the database and regenerate, now it only creates the drill in the contour mill. There's no countersinks. And if this becomes a different size, that's okay. Because, because of the way I copied an entire subset of existing strategies. So that's under features and operations, user defined strategies. You can select an existing strategy. So in the case of say a rectangular pocket, if we wanted to make something that is kind of similar to rough rest finish, but a little bit different, and we wanted to make sure we hit all 12 scenarios where we can already use that one, this is the way to do it. One last thing I want to show you guys. Let's go back to this battery box. What if I want to add a cham for this to this top edge? I want to add a tool manually. Well, we know how to do that. We can go back to our feature. We can right click and say new two and a half axis mill operation. I can add a contour mill. When I add that contour mill, it asks where do I want to pull the parameters from? We have a tech DB default, which is just a default setup in the technology database. Or if I had other contour mills, I could choose from existing contour mills. Now with 2017, we actually can add more default options. Because the default was never really exactly what you wanted. You know, I have to choose the default even though I want a chamfer, for example. So I'm going to show you guys how to set that up now. So in TechDB under Mill, Features and Operations, Default Operation Parameters. If we go to Contour Mill, Contour Mill, the default in this case was using these parameters. Okay, so obviously it didn't have chamfer machining selected. It's using certain depth of cut, side parameters, all that stuff. We can actually add more to this list. So if I want something called chamfer, I can now add that. We'll say it's an edge break. Now in the parameters, I can automatically set it up. To do chamfer machining, I can set a default length and a default clearance. Unfortunately, what I can do is select a tool in this area. But now look, so here's just another shortcut. When I go to manually add a contour mill to this, I can now choose my chamfer option. I can choose a tool if it's in my tool crib. So if I have a countersink tool in my tool crib, I can choose that in this menu here. But I can't set it to automatically grab a tool. By, I can't tie a tool to that chamfer option.
But that's the last thing I wanted to show you guys was the ability to add options, a drop down menu to the manually inserted um, options in the operation uh, parameters. And that's about all I had for you guys today. So we covered how CamWorks learns. Really, there's two ways to do it, and they're all kind of dependent on which method you want to use. What's going to be most comfortable to you? Do you have ideas that you might, you know, want to plan out ahead of time? You can do that within the TechDB. Just kind of understand and, and note how it searches for those entries. It's going to go in order. It's going to look for the first matching entry. And make sure you set up your entries in a way that there's always an option for the database. Meaning you don't want to set up your database in a way that has holes in it. So you get features where there's no matching condition. You should always have at least one entry that is set to something very broad, something that's going to just grab whatever is left over. And if you have a you know, situation where you're cutting lots of features that are similar, then you might just do the work in the data in CamWorks itself. As you program parts, save your work back, understand that it's going to save exactly what you're working with at that time. And so when you go to access that option in the future, you might understand why it may not be available. All right, with that, I'm going to thank you guys for joining. I appreciate it. Again, this is not the only video that's going to be on YouTube for TechDB strategies. If you want more of an introductory look into the TechDB and something that glosses over all of the different areas of the TechDB, uh, go ahead and go to our YouTube page, youtube.com slash goengineer. Just search for TechDB and you'll find the other webinars. So thank you guys for joining. I appreciate it and I'll catch you next time. Mm -hmm.